Hello snowboarders of the internet, I am your host TC and today I will be reviewing the Nitro Beast. This board is equipped with Nitro's true camber, so what that means is you have camber from contact point to contact point, just like you're used to, all that load spring and pop that you want with the stability and edge hold. The Nitro Beast comes in the sizes of a 151, 155, 158, and 162. I rode this board at Copper Mountain where it was perfect groomers pretty much all day because it was empty. The sun was poking out with a little bit of wind towards the end of the day, but for the most part, it was a nice warm sunny day. I used my Ride Fuse boots and Jones Mercury bindings. When it comes to overall flex of this board, it is extremely stiff. One of the stiffest twin boards I have ever ridden. Where when you go to torsionally flex this thing, you are putting all of your effort into it. It really doesn't want to torsionally flex. But when it comes to stability, it is one of the most stable twin boards I've ever ridden as well. This thing holds an edge extremely well. It does cut down on quite a bit of vibrations as well. And when you're going over like chunder or push piles, it just goes right over it and doesn't lose its edge whatsoever. When you're ollieing this board, it snaps and pops to the moon. It has great edge hold, so you don't have to worry about that at all. And also, you don't really have to load it up days in advance or anything like that. You can just shift your weight and just ollie like you're used to on a snowboard. When it comes to jumps, I don't think they've made a jump that this board can't hit. This thing could literally take anything you put in front of it and possibly overshoot it. It pops extremely well off the hits. The main thing I would say that I did have a problem with is I was not used to how much this board actually pops. Where I went through a back three and over rotated, could have easily went five on it. So I understand why Marcus Cleveland can spin so much on this thing. So just keep that in mind. But apart from that, this thing does handle jumps and ollieing extremely well go over that that lift shack anything like that that's what this thing's made for all right guys make sure you like subscribe click that bell turn on those notifications just so you don't miss anything we have coming out when it comes to buttering this board it's going to take quite a bit of effort it wants to fight you the whole way i did figure out that there is a tiny sweet spot right at the contact point here but that being said, it's super tiny, so you are gonna really have to feather that line. It's the same in the nose. It is pretty much identical where you are going to find that sweet spot. It's gonna take a lot of effort, but it is what it is when you sacrifice that for stability. Now, when it comes to jibbing, when you're sliding sideways or just 50 50 a rail, it's super easy. It grips it extremely well. It's not gonna clank you off the rail or flex around and pop you out just because this board is stiffer it kind of keeps its rigidity on the rail when you're trying to press i wasn't very successful at pressing on rails where it fought me the whole time and it just wanted to sit right back down so if you're able to find that sweet spot on it let me know in the comments because i do want to be able to do that when you're going for those short quick carves like when you're approaching a rail or anything like that it does get on edge extremely easy you're not really having to throw any body weight into it or anything like that i noticed when i was getting the edge to engage pretty much right off the front foot here towards that contact point is a really good spot to get that board to engage when you're going to the medium and larger carves it does hold up extremely well. I didn't feel like I had a speed limit or anything like that on it. I was able to pretty much full throttle this thing, turn whenever I wanted on it. And even on those larger carves, just kind of push those knees together, decamber the board a little bit, and it's just gonna rip right through it. You can even Euro carve on this thing with no problem whatsoever. Those contact points are gonna flex right in and that board's gonna hold you. If you do happen to wash out, just watch out. You might get sprung out of that carve. Rider in mind. The rider for this board is gonna be somebody that is extremely advanced and they're pretty much trying to hit either half pipe or jumps most of the time, or even take it to those really technical big rails. Do you guys need another subscription service? Great, well head on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. Sure, I could tell you about it here, but we have a great video over there getting into really in depth. I really enjoyed this board. Pretty much everything about this was amazing. I'm not gonna take it in the power or anything like that, but if I'm gonna have a park day where I just wanna send jumps and pretty much go as big as I want, this is gonna be the board for it. I had a blast on it. It 
Could be a daily driver, honestly. Comparable boards, the Solomon Huckknife Pro, the K2 Hypnotist, and the Capita Outsiders. Recommended bindings, the Nitro Team Pro, the Ride C8, and the Jones Mercury. This has been my review of the Nitro Beast. Did you guys like it? Good. Why don't you go check out one of our videos for the comparable boards?